So in our last video, we learned the compound interest and we saw that the formula for the compound interest is A equals P times one plus R divided by M raised to the M times T, where P is the principal, R is the rate, M is the number of compounds per year, and T is the number of years that the principal is invested. And of course, A is the accumulated amount, the amount, of, the amount that you have at the end of that T years. All right, so we're gonna look at some more examples here in this video. Uh, we've got an example here up on the screen. How long will it take $12,000 to grow to $15,000 if the investment earns interest at the rate of 4% per year compounded monthly? So I like to set up by writing out what my variables are. Once I identify all the variables, then it's just a matter of plugging into the formula and then taking that formula and putting it into the calculator, we get an answer. All right, so what are we given here? Um, we've got, we got A, P, R, M, and T that we need to identify. One of these are gonna be unknown that we're gonna be solving for. All right, so how long will it take $12,000, right? That's how much we would initially invest to grow to $15,000. That's how much we would have at the end of that time. Um, if the investment earns interest at the rate of 4%, that's the rate written as 0 0.04, and it's compounded monthly, so M is 12, 12 months in a year. And so we don't know the time, that's what we're looking for. How long will this take? All right, so we have all of our variables, so, so, so we can just plug this into the formula as it is. All right, 15,000 is A, 12,000 is P, R is 0 0.04, M is 12, and M is 12, and we're trying to find the T. All right, so a little tricky here this time because this T is in the exponent position. All right, so we need to recall some of our properties from exponents and logarithms. Okay. In order to solve for t, when t is in the exponent position, we've got to get that t out of the exponent. And to do that, we can apply a logarithm property. Before we do that, we want to get this, this term, the factor that's got the exponent by itself. In other words, we want to get this parentheses on the right-hand side by itself by dividing both sides by this 12,000. Okay. And again, I'm, I'm just gonna leave my fraction as it is. I'm not even gonna to try to simplify it. Oh, you could, you could take that down to 15 twelfths and even further, but I'm just gonna leave it as it is. All right, there's, there's no additional simplification that you absolutely need to do as long as you have a graphing calculator, okay? Because you can type that all into the calculator. You can see what you're typing in. All right, so now after we've divided both sides by that principal amount, 12,000, now we're going to apply the logarithm property to where we're taking the natural log of both sides. Now, now just a quick review. All right, these are log properties. Yeah, we have three main properties here. When we take the log of the product of two numbers, such as log of x times y, that's equivalent to the sum of the logs. Log of x plus log of y. A second property is when we're taking the log of a quotient such as log of x divided by y, that is the difference of those logs. That's log of x minus log of y. And then property three, when we have the log of, say, x to the y, hey, think about what this means. Right, x to the y power. 
Let's change that to an actual number there, just to make it a little more concrete. Let's, let's, let's use log of x squared. Now, what if it was log of x squared? We could write log, uh, we could write x squared as x times x, right? And then we can go back to property number one and say that when I take the log of a product, I can write that as a sum of logs. So log of x times x is log of x plus log of x. And log of x plus log of x is two log of x's. Okay, so essentially what happened? Look at what we started with and look at the final product. And what happened? Well, really what we did is we took this exponent here and we moved it to the front of the log. Okay, and that's the, that third property is when we take the log of a term that's raised to a power, we can move that power in front of the log. That's the property that we want to use here in this example. Okay, so I'm going to take the log of both sides. And it doesn't matter which log that you take of both sides. I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. The natural log. So if we're just talking about log, a log without any specific base, we assume is the base 10. Natural log has a base of E. That's log base E. All right, E being Euler's number. Which is 2.71828. It's an irrational number, so it keeps going kind of like pi. There is a button on the calculator that we can use there instead of using that, that actual number. Okay. All right, so by but by taking the natural log of both sides, I can now apply property number three of logs to where I can move this exponent to the front of the log. So I'm gonna move this 12t in front of the log. So now we have natural log, 15,000 divided by 12,000, equals 12t times natural log of one plus 0 0.04 divided by 12. And now I want to solve for t, right in front of us, find t, so I can, uh, now the t is out of the exponent position, and now I can divide both sides by everything other than that t. So I'm gonna divide both sides by this 12, natural log of one plus 0 0.04 divided by 12. When I put this into the calculator, be careful here, I will need parentheses around the denominator. All right, if you have, if you have more than one term in the denominator, or more than one factor in the denominator, you will need parentheses around that denominator and, and the numerator as well. If you're in doubt, um, use the, use, use parentheses. All right, so we're going to type this in exactly how we see it. Uh, let's see, let me, let me go one extra step here so that we can see that better, right? So we're typing this in. Okay. All right, so we should have a natural log button on the calculator on the TI-83. It is, it is, uh, see here's the log. And you can use log, you'll get the same answer as I do if, uh, you know, when I'm using natural log, you can try it. Use, use the log button and I'll use the LN button. We'll get the same answer. All right, so log, natural log of 15,000 divided by 10,000, parentheses, divided by 
parentheses around the denominator, 12 times natural log of one plus 0 0.04 divided by 12. Close those two sets of parentheses and we get an answer of 10, 10 10.15351271. Okay, so now we can now we can round since this is our final answer. Now, how many decimal places do you need to round for time for the, the years? Um, if the instructions do not specify, certainly two decimal places would be fine. Okay. All right. So, how long do we need to invest for our initial investment of twelve thousand dollars to grow to fifteen thousand? We would need to lead that into an account for ten point one five years. All right, let's look at one more example. I think we can uh, get one more example in here. Again, we're working with compound interest. And in this case, we are working with a promissory note. An individual purchased a four-year $10,000 promissory note with an interest rate of 5.5% per year compounded semi-annually. And we're trying to find how much did the note cost. Okay, so a $10,000 promissory note is how much it will be worth at the end of the designated time period. All right, so this is saying that after four years, this note will be worth $10,000. Okay, so that's, that's like the accumulated amount. All right, so in this case, the accumulated amount, that's the $10,000. The interest rate is 5.5% or 0.055. And the time is four years. It's compounded semi-annually, so M is two. And we're, we wanna know how much did the note cost when the individual purchased it, right? What was the principal? That's what we're trying to find here is the principal. So we plug everything in to the formula. Right, 10,000 equals P times one plus 0 0.055 divided by two raised to the two times four, right, which is eight there. Okay, so we want to solve for P. We want to get P by itself. We can do that by dividing everything that P is being multiplied by. And, and I'm going to simplify that two times four, which is eight, just to make things a little easier there. And, and anything that you can simplify without rounding, you're certainly welcome to do that. And you could even divide that 0 0.055 by two if you wanted to. Um, I, I'm not really bothering with it in this video because I know I'm gonna just throw everything into the TI-83 calculator to get my final number. Um, all right, so let's, Put this into the calculator here. So the principal is 10,000 divided by parentheses 1 plus 0 0.055 divided by 2 close parentheses raised to the eighth power. Okay, and we get an answer of it, right? We're finding how much is the note, how much did the note cost, right? How much did we pay for this $10,000 promissory note? And when you get your answer, you know, take a step back and, and make sure that your answer makes sense, right? You know, of course, a reasonable answer, you would expect that you would pay less than the $10,000, right? Because you want to make money off of this promissory note. All right, so um, this individual paid $8,049.06, right? That's reasonable over a four-year period. Uh, $8,000 grew to $10,000. Right, that's, that's a reasonable amount. Uh, so, so we trust that our calculations are good. Now, if we get a, a, an answer that's, that's much, that's larger than 10,000 or a very small number, um, 
you know, even a negative number. We know something's wrong there. We need to go back and check our calculations. And as long as we're putting our answers in, uh, in uh, as long as we're putting our formula into the TI-83, then it's most likely a problem with the parentheses, right? That would be the first thing to check if you get an answer that you don't think looks right. Check your parentheses, see if you missed a parenthesis somewhere.